Yeah, thank you so much for, you know, being flexible. Okay. No problem. Yeah, and saying yes to have a conversation mm. with us. Yes. Uh, and we're excited to learn about you, to learn about your work, how you get into fashion, and yes. how you connected to Best Range, mm-hmm. modeling. I was, I was mm. scrolling through your Instagram. <laughs> you have wonderful, wonderful pictures there. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> when did you start? Um, well, honestly, the way I got into modeling, my whole life I was a competitive dancer. So from the age of seven years old to I graduated high school, like I competitively like trained as a dancer. So after high school, I kind of, I feel like I always was creative, but I was just, I feel like dance, I was just burnt out. I didn't really enjoy it as much as I did in my in my youth. <laughs> so um I kind of just started like buying clothes like started like my like I just like always like to dress though like I never really thought of like being a model or I just always like nice clothes uh-huh. so I feel like as I got older I really got to get more pieces that I wanted and then I started taking pictures and posting on Instagram I'm like, okay, Julian like okay, you're tall, you can be a model like you can probably do this so then I just Cause I used to be like, I still, I'm really involved, but I'm a stylist as well, a wardrobe stylist. Oh, oh wow, okay. Yes. So, um, I feel like my work, I would get a lot of a lot of attention for my work. I mean, I would get attention for my work, but not as much attention as, as I would like. And then I would take pictures of myself just kind of for fun. And then that's when it would be like I would get a lot of good feedback. So a lot of people are like, oh, you should model, you should do this, you should do that. And then at first I thought it was kind of shallow. Like, I'm just literally taking pictures. Like, you know, I feel like with well, styling is more work. It just meant more. Yes. Mm-hmm. But um, I felt like modeling chose me. So mm. that's how I got into it. So wait, how long How long do you say you've been doing this so far? I want to say, like, about two years. Okay. But I haven't, like, I just started taking it seriously, like, this summer. <laughs> oh, okay. so you were yeah. Of in those places yeah. doing it it's also yeah, yeah it's, it's, i think since you had done dance i think that actually I, I think it's actually beautiful because you can your body is probably very flexible to thank you yeah 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 because you already well being on the stage you know being the center of the attention yes but yeah. you learned yeah. all of it mm-hmm. through dance i feel like i mean they will yeah they will help it would help a lot the skills you learned yeah. And dance. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like the skills that I learned from training, I didn't realize correlated until like after the fact, or it was just kind of like second nature when it came to taking pictures. But yes. I felt like it was a perfect continuation going into like my creative journey, leaving dance. You know, like I yeah. still felt fulfilled. Yeah. So I'm grateful for that. Yes. Absolutely. 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 And dance is fun. I mean, yes. it's hard work. Yeah. I, yeah. I see. I don't dance. I don't no. dance professionally, but you know, I, I, you when you dance just regularly, it's so much fun. I can I can imagine when it comes any anything we do and it becomes a profession. Yeah. There's like com, you know the competition side of it. It becomes intense. That's how I feel with modeling. Like mm. I feel like when I'm just taking pictures like by myself, but even though. I feel like naturally when I take on a task, yeah. I take things very seriously. Well, I'm a Virgo. Oh, same. Oh, nice. Yes. Yeah, so I feel like any task, like any endeavor I focus on, yeah. I naturally take it seriously, whether I'm starting yeah. having fun or, you know. Yeah. 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 So I feel like with pictures, like when I would, me and my friends, we would go places, have a plan, take pictures. I was really intentional with everything. Yes. And I feel like going into like modeling like professionally. Yeah. I'm like, you have to kind of lose that control because you're just a blank canvas. Yeah. So I feel like yeah. that's the pivot that I'm learning now. Like, Julian, you're just, you're not all that when it, com- you, when it comes to getting booked. You just have to show up and move your body. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So <laughs> I think that's the pivot I'm learning, but I'm learning to appreciate it as well because yeah. yes. you got to just go with the flow. Oh, you grew up in Detroit? I'm um, growing up in Detroit. I, I had a great life. I had a great youth. It was, amazing like from but from ages okay so i went to kindergarten in detroit and then from first grade 
to sixth grade after my parents got married my step job my stepdad his job moved to arizona so we were based in arizona okay. so that's when i started my dance journey yes in first grade and then um my sixth grade year me i did sixth grade in arizona and then seventh middle school i did here so it was kind of like a culture shock in a sense because yes. every summer <laughs> i will go on the plane like by myself mm-hmm. to visit my family like in michigan you know how old, how old? Seven years old, like on the plane by myself. On the plane by yourself at seven. Yeah, and the, like the way it would work is to like my mom would walk me all the way up, like down to my gate, and then whoever would pick me up would pick me up at my gate, since I was like underage, underage. Oh yeah. 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 And oh my god! And how did you feel on the airplane by yourself? The first time, like I don't know, I I don't even remember how I felt, but I remember being nervous. But I did it so many times, it just the feeling went away. Like it, it was just. Came- it Easy. became normal. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Are you still okay with the fly- flying? Is, is... Most definitely. <laughs> yes. Not traumatized. No, I never had any bad experience. It was just I felt so safe because like yeah. a flight attendant would like watch over me, like give me snacks. I just felt like royalty. All your work, you do it in Detroit now. So the stylist yes. thing. How? How is the process? The process as like, like the creative process behind. Yes, each. the creative process. How you, uh, you know, get the get the clients to style, and the, the, you probably take images as well, like all the stuff. Because I saw a lot of beautiful images on your Instagram as Thank well. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so how do you, you know, from start to finish, how does that look like? If somebody is never maybe interested in a young person somewhere yeah, interested in the same cross in the same career how does that look like my whole life like my first job ever i started working in retail so i always loved working in retail and i feel like that goes along with me always liking it like dress and like i always like clothes yeah. so my yeah. first job i was yeah so when i was 15 16 yeah. my first job was i worked at mr allen's like a, like it's, it's, it's it was a sneaker store here in detroit uh-huh. And then, so I moved up. Then I was, um, I started as a kid stylist at Nordstrom, as a kid stylist. And then I went to the men's department and started styling there. So from there, I went to Saks Fifth Avenue. I was a stylist there. And it was, I feel like it really opened my eyes to how, I don't know how brands market themselves and how you can really cultivate an image for someone through, like, through clothing. You get what I'm saying? Yes. So, um, even though like the clients I appointed through Nordstrom, they kind of gave me as Sykes, mm-hmm. I really had to hustle and really flex my gift of gab to yeah. get clients, you know, to want to shop with me because they can shop with anyone on the sales floor, but why, yeah. why would they want to shop with you? So I kind of took the stylist approach yeah. and it made me more personable. Yes. Um, so from there, like. But department store styling, you kind of get freedom, but freedom, but not as much freedom. Like, cause with sex, it was really all about numbers. You know what I'm saying? It was all about sales versus styling. And yes, and I, I, it's the saying. Well, this is a guy on TikTok I watched, and he says, um, "Capitalism doesn't care about your creativity." Okay. And that's how I felt about yeah, um, yeah. working in like larger department stores. Yes. So that's when I kind of just became more freelance and started like just working with my friends on different shoots and like reaching out to different um, photographers because the approach I like with Justin was really like playing in my clothes. I didn't like taking it too seriously. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Or just like, caring, like I like good quality clothes, but even like caring about the brand of clothes and just kind of, you know, so I feel like with yes. editorial, I can really, there's no limit or like of how high or low I can go because yeah. I'm like, it doesn't even have to be wearable in a sense, you know, because yeah. it's for the picture. Yes, yes. So, yes. um, that's when I would just, yeah, just kind of meet people. Yeah. Um, even, like, for event styling or, like, for birthday shoots, that's yeah. kind of how I would do. Because I feel like Detroit is, is, is growing, but yeah. as far as, like, an editorial stylist, there's not really a big market for that. But what I do appreciate appreciate about Detroit there's a lot there's a lot of room to create opportunities for yourself yes because the the, the industry is young yes you you need it you are needed yes. yeah yeah I love so, that yeah yeah I love that for you <laughs> thank you 
<laughs> on your on your Instagram, we also saw that you have a brand, right? Is it uh, is it just is it called what is? Crazy? Yeah, can you talk about that? Yeah. Oh that. um no, I actually don't have a brand, oh, but don't. I just call myself a brand because oh, like the way I can yeah. So yeah, I am a brand. So myself, yes. but I think it just kind of yeah. um. Uh, Julian, uh, I, I mean, I'm trying to find uh, the brand name. Julian brand. <laughs> yes, ex yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I so <laughs> I feel like too that's just kind of because I kind of use my um Instagram as like a journal, you know, yeah. or like kind of I've just been taking a pivot to how I create because I feel like the real kind of influencers they don't really look at what's going on; they're living in real life and just recording themselves. You get what I'm saying? Right. Or documenting themselves. Yeah. So when I put in my bio like a brand, that's kind of me. You get what I'm saying? Branding yeah. myself as just. Because yes. I feel like it's easy to just see me as a model or just see me as a stylist or just kind of, so I'm just, I'm a brand, honestly. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And that's like, and that's, and that's something that a lot of, a lot of us young people are, are, yeah. are it's, it's nice to see that trend that we're starting to get to that place yeah. where we are brands as people instead yeah. of trying to attach yourself to maybe something yeah. larger, like as a model or as a stylist, it's something we're multi hyphenate. Yes. Uh, create yes. when yeah. we kind of we kind of do a little bit of everything. Yes. And um and I, I appreciate that, particularly the modeling aspect. I've done a little bit of modeling back in college, it's like a little bit. Um I tried <laughs> runway modeling one time. Yeah. And I was like, you know, they told me like you can make a little bit of money, like I'm tall, I'm slender, I kinda have like the build for it. And it didn't take like I enjoyed the the process, but it wasn't really uh uh, my cup of tea. I like. I'm an actor. I, I, you know, I'm, uh, I'm like, you know, in front of the camera and this and that. So I like the aspect, the creative aspect of um, of modeling, because it was kind of in the same way, like a similar type of prep, at least okay. for me. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, but, but not the runway. What was no, the runway, thing? runway was interesting. Like, because it was, you kind of have to like get the blocking down, and like, because <laughs> I'm very technical when it gets to that, and I'm not a dancer. <laughs> Maybe like as a dancer, you're able to just. I feel like a couple, like literally last month, I just walked my first runway show, yeah. and I feel like with me being a dancer, I kind of was overthinking it a little bit too much. But it's okay. way more like pedestrian than yeah. what I thought it was. And you were feeling the music because you know you were. <laughs> and also too, like <laughs> modeling or just even walking, like it's really a skill, and you don't realize how much. Mm -hmm. Like even though it seems like I said it seems so pedestrian. Yeah. You don't realize how much intent goes behind it until you're actually doing it. And you're like, oh, this is what I look like. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so you, yeah. I really commend, like, all the great runway models out there that's killing it. Yeah, like, yeah, the trains for it. Like, mad props to them. Yeah. I mean, it's, like, it's a different skill set that you don't realize you need to develop until you get there. Yeah. You know yeah. I mean? The you appreciate it. are much easier. Yeah. yeah. Well. Because you can, yeah, yeah. you don't, you, you can edit. You can do. Yeah, you can kind of manipulate, okay. you know, you manipulate. the picture. Yeah. Yes, yeah, because it's not like, yeah, runways, I feel like would be terrifying. I don't know how people get really good at it. And yeah. are you looking forward to doing more, more runway, runway model? Runway, uh, I'm open to like, I'm open to everything. There's something you just mentioned about, you know, when you are posting on social media, you have an intention that that's your brand. And when most social media influencers are posting, it's like just like a diary. Um, and I read someone also talking about exactly that, that we don't think about it as a brand. Mostly, a lot of the times people use social media as like, um, what's the term they use? Like a, a reputation. <laughs> so the, she was talking about how it's important to remember that if it's your brand, you, you are intentional about everything that goes up there. But if you're not, then your wall, whatever, the things you post is more of a, a reputation your personal reputation, not a brand, because you know, we're posting our dog, you know, we're putting on all this stuff and it's it doesn't Yeah, and I feel like I'm still <laughs> finding that that thin line between like my hometown reputation and my brand. Yeah. And I yeah. feel like like starting really now, I really just wanna just turn up turn up the heat when it yeah. comes to posting and just being just being more creative, like, you know, because yeah. even I appreciate how a lot of brands are, um, the way they kind of make their, like, the way they market themselves is to be more personable, 
but it's like that's really it's it's it looks easy from the outside looking in, you know, still being raw and connecting to the consumers, but you're still a brand, you're, you're a business. Right. That's, absolutely. that's what it comes down yes. to. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. That's, um, that like, that's very interesting. I'm from Dallas, Dallas originally. And I remember like getting into the like filmmaking circuit in Dallas and I was fresh out of college and I was, I was very self-conscious about like the the combination of like the hometown oh. Alex versus like the professional creative Alex, yeah. and it was it was kind of hard because there was a lot of like over um, overlap between like mm -hmm. my childhood friends and the like my life I knew before like I I um, I delved into this creative space yeah. like the the overlap and the juxtaposition was was kind of hard to blend because oh. I was trying to present myself as this creative who was trying to advance my career and then try to move out to either New York, or LA and this and that. Um, but also trying to be authentic to myself and not yeah. switch up, you yeah, know, yeah, did, yeah. did you feel any sort of like um, any pressure to, to, to meld those two things? If that question makes sense. I felt like at first I did, but I, I feel like I changed my perspective, or I'm changing my perspective on it. I feel like versus like me switching up, I'm evolving. Yeah. You know? So it's just like I feel like that's just kind of part of life. Or you know what I'm saying? Like you know how they say, or like oh they switched up, or they you know it's just like mm -hmm. people change, and yes. that's it's that's what it's all about. So I feel like yeah. even like you ever feel like in the midst of change. Or like you even post something and you feel like this is really something different for me. I yeah. feel like that's the that's the purest form of like being vulnerable and yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like being vulnerable and and truly expressing yourself and kind of what am I trying to say? Like when you know it can be not not even controversial, but just know it's really different for you. That's I feel like that's when it's the best time to present yourself. You get yeah. what I'm saying, right. but like yeah. still perfect it and, and you know make it clean. Right. But that's that's the fun part about being a creative, and that's what I'm starting to lean in towards instead of being a you know. Yeah, yeah, like you you lean into those things. Like the, that's very interesting. You, yeah, when you are vulnerable, you're most vulnerable when you try to do something different in yes. the creative space. Yes, because you're not you're not good at it a lot of times, or at least you don't think you are. Yeah, but that is that's the exact moment that you should lean into it and see yeah. see who you are, see how it fits you. Yes. you know, and it's not so much uh, what other people will think or or kind of catering to the audience or who whomever, yeah. but seeing like who you as you as an artist, how this sort of like resonates with you and what you're trying to create. Bit, yeah, and then that's when all the other doors can begin to open a lot of times, and yeah. you know, you discover a new a new aspect of your creativity yeah and you julian because yeah. thank you i feel like <laughs> when it comes down to I, like it's really like i feel like a lot of even when it comes to just life a, a lot of things are really simple but just not easy like you know yes. so yes i feel like it all comes down to to you just being yourself right like yeah. in to, to to your fullest extent and like in yeah. the most soulful way possible yeah. and that's how you really get Things that align with you, with your true self, and that's mm -hmm. fulfilling. Like the, where you, yeah, the, were you always um, was did did being yourself or being vulnerable always came easy to you, or it's something? Um, not really. I feel like I feel like the people around me would say yes. Yeah. But me, I just always wanted to push my pen a little bit more. Just I feel like I could pre be pretty unhinged sometimes. <laughs> I don't know if it's like. <laughs> I don't know if the, like the Virgo in me, like I kind of just want to present my stuff, but like deep yeah. down inside, I know I'm really, I can be unhinged yeah. and I just kind of, I don't know. I just like, I feel like life, I don't know. I just like, I like, I just like anyone who's really being themselves. Like I can respect that and just appreciate someone truly being themselves, yeah. whether I align with that or not. Yeah. I just have so much respect because this world can be really cruel and yeah. It seems so simple, but it's it can be it gets sticky sometimes. Yes, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. You, were, you were so right because 
I think because this world is almost like everyone wants to walk in the footprint of somebody. And it's, it's, that's the hardest thing to try to walk in somebody else's footprint, not being able. So when you try to go and create your own footprint, it's new, it's different from how things are used to be done. And so that creates chaos in the people's view. And that can be challenging, which it should not be because we yeah. all, we're all completely different and we like different things. And, and that's what makes the world beautiful is yes. being different mm-hmm. and tapping into that. And so I applaud, I, 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 I'm, I'm with you applauding people who are able to fully be themselves or continue looking for who they are. Um, yeah. Because you know. even sometimes, mm-hmm. like you might see something and like it's kind of human nature just to judge, yeah. but like, but after the judgment over, like after the shame is over, and you really ponder on like whatever's taking place, you, you would think like, dang, like that was kind of that might have been too real for me, but like that was them being yeah. real, you know? Yeah. And yeah. just really like learning your place and how you view everything really yes. does help you. It helps you like um, navigate what's for you and, and what's not for you. Yes, mm-hmm. absolutely, absolutely, and knowing how to navigate the world without it's, it's 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 that's really nice what you just said about you know judgment because yeah. we all have that we all have that first it's like ah and then you're like oh yeah and oh, like you know. losing shame both ways like kind of i mean not like all the way but like just kind of shame in places you know like i really shouldn't have shame being myself you know what i'm saying and that kind of just helps like whether it's good or bad it just yeah. kind of just we do really do ourselves yeah as well i think it just it takes courage to let go of the expectations yeah. that other people might have on you yeah and, the and then to just yeah and the assumptions and just it once you're able to resist yeah the temptation to, to fit in line yeah with what again those expectations are then that's when you find yourself and then you realize yeah. how freeing it is. Absolutely. And then it's just like, it's like, oh, I have no problem being myself. I have no problem walking this path. Yeah. You know? Especially if you have good intentions, like yeah. yes. just be yourself because you're not, you don't, you're not planning on hurting anybody. So as long as you, you have no, you know, plan on mm-hmm. hurting anybody, just uh, be yourself because I, I do believe that if you have a good intention, then you're yourself. You have yes. a good intention. Do you have a bigger impact on the people around you because yeah. they start learning as well. Yeah. And I don't know, we make a difference in, in that way. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, you, it, when you're able to show the world who you are, yeah. that gives somebody else bravery to, yeah. to then do the same thing for themselves. Yes. And yes. that sort of like compounds on itself. And then, yeah, there's a, there's this small book I love. I always, I love to read it all the time. It's called the, the, the fourth agreement. Have you mm, heard of it? I've heard of it. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. So it has all these like five, four or five rules of life. And it talks about the, the assumption. One part of it, there is a part where it talks about assumption on how we assume what the other people are thinking about. Mm-hmm. And we create narratives in our minds that are actually, we are, we are creating them. They are not there. They don't exist. We created them. A lot of the times the things that, uh, that hurt us mentally are the, the thought the thought process, the things that we, you know, yeah. create. Oh, if I wear this lipstick, everybody's going to think I'm a slut. I'm kidding. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but there are cultures and places that we come from that, it, it, that influence the way we think. And even when you're at a place where nobody's going to judge you, you're still going to judge yourself. And that's going to, you know... That's gonna hurt, but it's important. To remember. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna hurt. Yeah. yeah, it's important to remember that oh, it might be me thinking about all this. Maybe nobody else is. What's What's next for you? Yeah, what's that's um, what we're gonna ask? Yeah, what do you have? What do you? What's next for me? Well, I'm currently in school right now for fashion merchandising. Oh, good. Um. So, what's next for Julian is <laughs> taking modeling more seriously. Yeah. Um. I just, I mean, of course I have expectations to be with an agency, but I really just want to have fun with it and just build my brand as a creative um, network, of course, as a model, 
as a stylist and really I want to work with brands showcasing myself because I feel like yeah. the way I can mesh it is like I'm always styling other people so if I can pull from brands of style for myself and kind of showcase myself and go back to my roots and kind of yeah. how I started on Instagram yeah it marketing myself in that way would yeah. just be yeah it would be the, tr the truth <laughs> Yeah. Will be the yes, 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 the truth. Yes. And we hope it happen it happens for you. Um mm -hmm. how long how long are you in school for? Um, so oh this is another backstory. So twenty twenty yeah. I graduated high school in twenty twenty. Okay. Um I went to Michigan State for a year and a half for business management. Okay. I withdrew and took a year and a half break. Now I'm at Oakland Community College here, um, just taking classes, and I honestly don't even know how much longer I have left. But I do know all my credits transferred, so like wow. I'm further along than I thought I was. Wait, you said you said Oakland? Yes. Like Oakland in the Bay? No, no Oakland, Oakland County. Oh, Oakland, in, Oakland, in, Oakland. In Michigan. Yeah, Detroit. Yes. Yeah. yes. <laughs> Educated me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Ah, that's that's. So how is um because you you shifted you shifted from the first uh in michigan and now taking completely different a different uh even though it probably plays the, if you still can transfer the credits from business classes right yes yeah 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 so how is when did you make that shift was it when you're in a class you know studying business and everything did you i just this is not for me yeah i just <laughs> felt like i felt like i was such I was on like a, a narrow learning path. It, it didn't give me any room to really be myself. It was all about somebody else's vision or just like numbers. And like I was doing computer science class. Like it was just so stressful. And <laughs> I, know I don't know if like COVID learning, because my first year of college, it was, it was all online. We found out, I want to say like three weeks prior that we weren't going on campus. Oh. And then my second year was on campus. But it just still, that's when I knew for sure that it wasn't for me. Like, I tried to yeah. kind of milk it the first year. My yeah. freshman year, we're online. I'm like, maybe because yeah. it's online, I don't like it. Nope, got on campus. That solidified. So I hated it even more. So yeah. I was just like, I was proud of myself for being so strong and sticking it through for, how, for yeah. how, like, for me knowing how much I hated it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah. I felt like everything really worked out just how it was supposed to. Well, yeah. yeah so. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And how did the parents? My mom, I feel like, again, I was more shameful than my, like, my parents weren't shameful at all, but I just was like, I just yeah. knew I was going to get my degree at Michigan State in, like, you know, so, but my parents were like, wow. I mean, if you feel like, that's, you know what I'm saying, like, but I knew I was going to go back to school, so it just making that pivot was, like, yeah. the hardest, like, the, I just wanted to be more intentional than ever because I already yeah. kind of spent some time doing something I didn't really enjoy. Yeah. Yeah, and, and now shifting to the things you love, you're much happier. Yes. What the parents want is for you to yeah. be happy, you know, happy. Yeah. Right, yeah, yeah. and to, to have momentum. But it's 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 yeah. good that you still have that vision and, yeah. like, the intention that you're talking about. Yeah. Um, yeah. Especially, like, after, like, a, that's a that's a shift. And that, yeah, you know, that could, different. especially during a pandemic, such yeah. a, a yeah. wild time with school. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's admirable that you, you still keep yeah. the vision and you become more um, affirmed about who you are. Because oftentimes yes. we learn more about ourselves by experiencing things that don't yeah. align with us. Yes. You know? Yeah. It, you know, that, that, like that helped you narrow your vision even. It most definitely gave me an introspective view on myself yeah. and just, just always staying curious. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, stay mm -hmm. curious. Yes, that's a, actually a beautiful message. So as we're closing our conversation, what message um, on top of stay curious, what message would you like to give to the, our listeners? Um, or what do you hope for people in the world? They're just yeah, what's your hope? I hope for people in the world to. Uh, this might be really deep, That's but I and better, even better. Okay, so yeah. I just. Okay, well, so this is just my, or like, this how I maneuver through life. Mm -hmm. So my biggest advice yeah, um, for anyone is always keep God first. Yes. And um, 
just to be yourself. Unap- I don't know how to say it, but like unapologetically. Yes. Like, yes. 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 Yeah. 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 That's great. That's, that's yeah, too, absolutely. nice too, deeply, deeply important. Yeah. Things. Very important. Mm. Yeah. 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 We, and we wish that to everyone in the world. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Thank you so much. For Thank you. This beautiful conversation. Um, it was kind of, it was really nice, you know, listening from you and, and hearing your thought process and how you're moving through the world um, and inspiring more young people to not give up and to yeah. follow their heart. I feel like that's what you've been doing. I'm yes. Like, that's what you, that's your journey, how, uh, from our conversation, that's how it feels that you've been following your heart and you're much you have a smile on your face and that's <laughs> yes that's all we can ask for. that's all we can yes. ask for. So, yeah. especially uh being in college during the pandemic that was really hard really hard for a lot of young people and so being able to fight through and be here right now um yeah we're very grateful that you you even having a conversation with us is this your first podcast? No. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. Yes. <laughs> oh, nice. You did great. You did great. Yeah, Thank you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I hope we treated you well. So you. Were no, you guys good. killed it. Like, I, it, <laughs> it, it felt great. I oh, appreciate, nice. appreciate it. Nice. So you will be open to do more. Yeah. Most definitely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, perfect, yes. perfect. Yeah, yeah. Good. You want to say something? Or... Well, no, I just, I, again, I got to <laughs> echo between your sentiments, but thank you so much for joining us. Yeah. Um, I learned a lot. I, I've, you know, because I always, I love learning, and I'm, I'm going to date myself. I'm only 30 years old, and yeah. I, you're, I am assuming, early, early 20s. Um, yeah. I'm 21. Oh, you're 20. Okay, okay. Oh, very early 20s. Very early 20s, right. <laughs> but in, in, I, I feel like throughout the 20s, yeah we can um, forget our um, our intentions. Mm-hmm. I think I think that's a good theme about this particular conversation is yeah. intention. Yeah. Life just gets crazy. Yeah. Um, priorities change yeah. here and there, but so long as you keep what your intention, your what you're passionate about yeah. and be intentional about those passions, yeah. then I think that you are on a right on a good path, yeah. right, in life. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just a, it's a great reminder, particularly for our older uh, viewers and listeners yes. who may be struggling with their purpose and, yeah. and struggling with the things that they are passionate about, how yeah. to follow those Whatever things. Whatever age you are at, you can start. You, you can, can always, always. Yeah, you can My, follow your heart. Yes. Yeah. I, 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 so I used to play basketball with a lot of old people, like in their 70s. And I asked them, I was like, why are you, why are you still playing with like 20 year olds, 21 year olds? Yeah. You know? And they would say, one, it keeps me young, but two, so long as there is breath in my body, there's yeah. life in my body, I can create the change that I want. I can, I can, yes. I can be who I want to be regardless yeah. of what it and looks like to I other started, people. When I started. Right. Yeah. And so I appreciate uh, yeah. definitely your, uh, yeah. your passion for life, yes. your vitality for life. And that's, yeah. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's just infectious. And so I, oh. oh, I know. I can't wait to see Julian Brand. Blush, yes, blush, you know, blush, blush. Blush. 